Hey guys, it's me, Double D, with another episode of Bayonetta. Last time, we went over some bonus stuff, including the ch bonus chapter, Angel Slayer. I am almost messed up there. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the two difficulties that are unlocked, Hard Mode and Non-Stop Climax Mode. So yes, I guess, as you can see on the screen, I am on Hard Mode right now. In fact, off screen, I have been doing all the chapters in Hard Mode just to prepare for this episode. Yes, there's chap chapter 1 is the only one that's left that I have yet to complete on hard mode because I wanted to save it for this video. So, before you want to go into hard mode, there's going to be a lot of equipment that you need to shuffle around. But first, if you are playing the Xbox or PS3 versions, you might want to skip this because us Wii U versions have an extra advantage. And that's in the costume. Remember when I said something about the Link costume having basically a free Muna Mahakala? Well, if you're playing the Wii U version, you might as well use it because that basically frees up an accessory slot right there. By the way, the Muna Mahakala will be very important to have in, in the higher difficulties if you mastered it. The Link costume makes it easier so you can have another accessory. So with that, let's get into hard mode to see what it has in store. Whoa, 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 whoa. First off, I just need to amend something. Remember when I said this in the epilogue? Ah, there we go. There's the last witch heart. Turns out I've been wrong. There are actually four witch hearts that I have yet to collect and I never even noticed. And they're on chapters 8 and 14. Yes, the bike and missile stages, there are witch hearts there. To get the first one in chapter 8, you're going to have to take a right on everything. Yeah, go right on everything and that includes the bridge. So if you cross a bridge and the verse ends after that, that's the bridge where you need to search for your witch heart. You want to take on the, go on the rightmost path and, well, go on the path and roll right the beam. And your witch heart should be there. On verse 4, you're going to have to take some exits onto that, that road over there. Yes, the back road where it all collapses and stuff. Yeah, the first exit that you take should have a witch heart. In Chapter 14, as you recall, there are two instances where enemies will invade your missile. And in both groups, it will consist of two affinities and an applaud. I don't know how anybody would get to get as to where to get these witch hearts, but to get the witch hearts, you need to defeat the applaud using a torture attack. Both of them. And that's how you get the four missing witch hearts that I missed. How do they miss those things? I have no idea. So as you notice, hard mode does not look that much different at all. It, however, in, turn, in your turns of equipment, use whatever weapons that you feel are best for you. Shoot up is pretty much a popular option, so I highly recommend you go for that. You don't have to deal with the set weapon set I'm using, you can just use whatever you want. Use whatever is suited to you. As for your accessories, like I said, the Moonha Maka Mahakala is very important if you have mastered it. However, if you're using the Link costume, you have much more leeway. The Eternal Testimony is also a must-have, because if you run out of magic, you will at least have two orbs of magic to work with. So, anything else would be helpful to you. Police Butterfly is also helpful if you want protection. Infernal Communicator if you want extra help doing damage. Sergei's Lover, I'm not really sure how, how I feel about that. And if you still haven't mastered the Witch Time do dodging method, Bracelet of Time is also suitable if you have the magic, because you're gonna be... Because if you're wearing the... Eternal Testimony, Bracelet of Time, and Eternal Testimony is a dangerous combination if you're comfortable with holding the button the whole time because then you'll be on perpetually on Witch Time because the Eternal Testimony is always going to be refill on your magic. The same thing goes true with Selene's Light because, well, it, it happens when you get hit, so it's always a good thing to have. Basically, anything that has to do with magic, you want to have Eternal Testimony on because the, these, the rest of these accessories will help you. Well, except for the Star of Dinte, because you don't have time to taunt. And if you don't want Witch Time, the Evil Harvest Rosary is also a viable option. I do not recommend putting on the Giz of Despair unless you are insane and want an extra challenge. So that's all the equipment that I recommend go going into Hard Mode. So, what is different about Hard Mode? Well, you at first glance, it's not that different. However, if I can just get to an encounter... 
So, if you recall, going in here, like, way back, grabbing this key and going up there, you'll have the battle three affinities. Guess what? When you go up here in hard mode, if I can get up there... Joy! Yeah! In hard mode, you're gonna be facing up against enemies in different environments. Even more powerful enemies, so yeah. You're gonna be facing up against some powerful enemies at earlier cha chapters of the game, so you'll be facing up against enemies basically in ways you have not discovered before. In fact, Joy... Joy is one of them. Yeah, you will be fighting in some points grace, gracious and glorious and set in the place of grace and glory. Grace and glory in other places where they shouldn't be. Yeah. It, basically, the main aim of hard mode is to get used to fighting enemies you have not met in your journey. Well, you have met in your journey, but in different locations. Now, as far as I know, during all my trek, I have not found a place where you can fight, fight kinship in a, in, a early, in a different location. So if you don't like kinship, at least you can look forward to that, but yeah. Another thing you have to look out for is the fact that, at, at least as far as I know, damage has increased on, on you, so you're going to have to be careful from here on out, because otherwise a wrong, wrongly placed move will cause you to get killed really quickly, at least as far as I know. If I'm wrong, then feel free to ignore me on that regard, but it seems to feel like that it your damage is increased. either. Well, the damage you take, not the damage you d dish out. That would have been cheap! But yeah, that is pretty much the ins and outs of hard mode. Different enemies in different locations that you have not fought them in. However, there is actually one more thing that I want to go over for hard mode, which should be coming up right... well, later. Okay, so... what The, the other difference between normal and hard mode is somewhere around here, in this in this area, because I'm pretty sure... Ah, here we go! Yes! An Umbran Crow! That was not there when we were playing it, playing the game through normal mode. Yeah, in hard mode and by extension non-stop climax mode, all the Umbran Crows have relocated, so it's in your best interest to search around for any Umbran Crows in areas you might not have explored before. Because, well, the Umbran Crows have relocated, and you want to 100% the game, you're going to have to find the Umbran Crows all over again. I'm probably not going to do that. I'm probably not... When you do that, I just repeated myself, but there are guides on the internet as to where these crows are, and trust me, a lot of the crows there are jerkish, so be careful when you're fi finding the crows. And in case you're wondering, no, you will not get arcade bullets on crows that you would find in normal mode. There was a crow here in normal mode, not so in hard mode, so no arcade bullets for you. There is, however, a crow way up there. So yeah, like I said, that was not there when we are playing in normal mode. I guess while I'm trying to complete chapter 1 on hard mode, I might as well say, say this right now, there are achievements for completing certain chapters in hard mode. In fact, I'm going to show on screen all the achievements you can get on hard mode. Basically, they're your standard to complete X amount of chapters or chapters X through Y in hard mode, as well as the achievement to, for completing all chapters in hard mode. And eh, it's pretty much your standard stuff as you saw in normal mode. You, we've been over this before. And there we go. By completing hard mode and with all chapters, you will be able to unlock non-stop infinite climax. The beauty of hard mode is that, you, considering you completed the game in normal mode, you could be able to take on all the chapters in hard mode in any order you wish. That's pretty much the benefit of doing it in hard mode. You could be able to do plan out your strategy and all that stuff. We also unlocked an LP, which means a new weapon! Mars, the bringer of war. We're gonna have to stop by the gates of hell to see what this weapon is. Another LP? <laughs> Working me to the bone. But no need to pity me. I was bored anyways. Let me go whip some things into shape for you. Won't listen to a word I say. I damn near wrung your neck. Now, get to work. Bazillions. This looks completely different. It looks like something out of Star Fox. But yeah, Bazillions is what you, the weapon you get for completing it on hard mode. And it's pretty much unique to see what it could do for you as a weapon. 
In fact, let's go to training right now. Or at least what can be loosely defined as training. Okay, first things first, before we're gonna have to look at the weapons, of course. Uh, here it is, Bazillions. You could be able to fit them in both your feet and your hands. Now, as for Bill's Bill Bazillions, functionally, they function almost exactly the same as Scarborough Fair. So if you have mastered all your, your comms in Scum Scarborough Fair, you should feel right at home. The difference is that its lasers will reflect off a wall, so they can be able to get any enemies from behind you and in front of you. However, that's the charge modifier for your feet. If you want to see what happens with your hands, yep, a freaking laser beam. You get a, a laser beam. It takes a long time to charge, charge, but it does a huge amount of damage to your enemy. Before we get into a battle with this thing, watch the wall here, because I'm going to shoot it with Y. Yeah, you see that? She is making a shape into a B, and if I could just shoot it, yep, that's a heart. You might not be able to see it see it in, in a close-up light because, like I said, but far enough away, you can be able to see that she is making some form making some formations. It's a really nice detail that you can easily miss because, let's face it, why would you ever want to shoot at a wall randomly like that? Anyway, so let's get into a battle to see what Bazillions can do for you. It's basically during decorations, but yeah, you see what it. What those lasers did to those decorations. Uh, in fact, they're probably not the best opponent to use for this type of stuff. But the point this still stands. Yeah, you see, I was I was totally facing away from that decoration and, and it hit it anyway. But yeah, Bazillions is a good long range tool. I mean, yeah, it functions the same as Scarborough Fair. But if you've been using Scarborough Fair or Onyx Rose the whole game, you should feel right at home. And with the added effect of of the laser bullets ricocheting off walls, you you should feel pretty comfortable. But yeah, that's Bazillions. Now, on to the other difficulty, that is non-stop climax mode. <laughs> Told you Bazillions is cool. Anyway, for real, on to non-stop climax mode. May Jubileus have mercy on my soul. Non-stop infinite climax. The hardest difficulty in the game. Before we go on, I'm just going to preface this right now. I am not going to go at, go for non-stop infinite climax in this playthrough. I know there was a let's play of this difficulty somewhere out there, but this is not going to be one of them. As such, I'm probably just gonna get the reward via the cheat phone I er, I alluded to back in the first bonus episode. With that, let's get into it to see what Nonstop Infinite Climax has to offer. Or as I like to call it, Absolute Hell. So yeah, this doesn't look that much different, and by the way, as I said back in hard mode, the Umbran Crows will also change, change location. Uh, if I could find the first one, but... But yeah, they will change location where, wherever they will. In fact, I know there is one in the train station, because that's where the first Umbran Crow is located. Okay, so there is the first Umbran Crow. Like I said, I'm probably not going to make a guide as to where the Umbran Crows are for in Infinite Climax and Hard Mode, but yeah. And guess what? This is the easiest to locate Crow in Nonstop Infinite Climax, because where they place these is jerkish. But yeah. Anyway. On to the next battle, because, oh boy, this is going to get interesting. Once again, everything I said about hard mode stands still stands here, and you might, actually, you must have an, have an ability or an accessory that uses witch time, should you want to use witch time at all. Because trust me, you are going to need that. That music is pretty much the, the sound of my doom. Here we go. First battle of non -stop. Okay, so technically second, but... But yeah, you see, I did bat within, but which time did not activate. Yeah. If you're, if you're good at dodging, or using bat within, then yeah. Don't bother, because you're not going to use which time through that, through that method. So, yeah. So you're, you're, you practically absolutely need an accessory to use that uses which time should you want to use which time, because the traditional method does not work. Also, you saw me trying to do damage to them, but they did not stagger at all. Yeah, they will not be stunned so easily. It's as if you're wearing the gaze of despair, so you're gonna have to be very careful from here on out. And also, you're gonna take more damage, at least as far as I know. 
a another perk of an onslaught climax aside from that is well aside from upper crows is of course if i already said this increased damage enemies won't be stunned so easily and did that joy just split into two i have never seen that before but yeah enemies won't be stunned so easily and you won't be able to pull off which time that using the traditional method that's pretty much the ins and outs of of non-stop climax mode. Yeah, there is a reason why it's hard. Also, it's, it, if I'm wrong, but it, it probably doesn't look like it, but the enemy seems to be faster, so it's probably not gonna be, e they're probably not gonna be easy to take down. But see, see, look at that. Okay, yeah. But yeah, Th this one fight alone, well, did a huge number of, to my health, but that's just because I am not too good at this game. <laughs> Yeah, I like I said, I'm not gonna go for non-stop climax mode. Yeah, I'm not gonna go for 100% completion. In fact, I just died right there. That's how hard this mode can be if you don't know what you're doing or if you're not prepared. However, there are other things I want to go over, and I forgot to do it in the hard mode playthrough. So I will look for it right now. As I try to take on these these joys again for the second time, I might as well say this. The achievement you lock is also the standard for for non-stop climax in mode. You know, complete X amount of chap. Actually, if memory serves, I don't think there are achievements that say complete X amount of chapters in non-stop climax mode. I could be wrong about this though. Anyway, so with that, there is one more achievement that you can unlock, and assuming you did hard mode and got Siphon, but there is also an achievement for getting all the Angelic Him Gold LPs. And yes, you will get a final LP for getting, well, all, for completing not Stop Climax mode, which will unlock a weapon. The LP is known as Jupiter, the bringer of jollity. And if possible, I might as well have to bring in a, bring in a clip somewhere from YouTube just to show you what this looks like, even though you probably searched it up yourself. But yeah, I guess here's the clip in question that will get you the weapon in question. Well, after I demonstrate what you what what else you're supposed to do, which in this case, I just remembered something before I cut into that clip right now. There is something I want to show you, and that's concerning the Alpines. So, if you go into an Alpine in harder non-stop climax mode, well, the challenges are the same, but yeah. Yeah, the enemy formation is different. I'm not sure if it's the exact same enemy formation back in normal mode, but it's still hard nonetheless. So yeah, good luck trying to get platinum in non-stop climax mode and all these Alpine challenges. As far, but yeah, because the enemy formations for a lot of these these Alpines will be significantly different. I'm not sure if it's true here, but yeah, actually this is probably a good Alpine to demonstrate the differences. However, you do unlock a weapon for completing all chapters in non-stop climax mode, and I would like to travel to my personal file to show that to you, see what that weapon should do for you. So, on to my personal file. Yep, that's pretty much what how it's going to be, because I did not try to do non-stop climax mode, and pro I'm probably going to get a clip of me unlocking it, or someone else unlocking it, just so you can see the Gates of Hell cutscene, and of course, I'm going to demonstrate to you on my personal file, which I admit using the cheat phone to unlock. My, my, this is an awfully rare gold LP right here. I can't believe you got your hands on it. This is gonna get me something real good. However, it's also gonna take a bit of effort on my part. But what the hell, it's about time I put in some hard work. Fight me this far before. What the hell? You never know if you'll ever see something like this again. But that's what you get with a weapon as fearless as this. Take good care of it. So, what is your prize for completing non-stop climax mode? It's it's a sword known as Pillow Talk. Oh my. Yeah, Pillow Talk, you probably know what that means. But yeah. So Pillow Talk. Functionally, it's practically the same as Shudaba. Well, not really. The shortened range, but more damage, but yeah. 
that's pretty much like Shudaba, so you should be right at home at using Shudaba. The main difference is, if I could do this one combo, no wicked weaves. Yeah, so your range is a bit nerfed. Or is it? If you use the EI Jutsu right here, uh, if I can do it. Yeah, you basically increase your range, and this one behaves just like a wicked Wii, so at least it's not a total loss. But yeah, if you don't mind the shortened range, but damage and the charge, you can increase your range, and you already shoot all before, you should feel right at home. Let's see if I can do an entire battle with these guys with, with, with what I want. Okay, so I took down that fairness. I'm fearless. Yeah. But if you, don't, if you want to have constant range and wicked weaves all the time, then you might want to stick with Shudaba. See, even though this is a powerful weapon, it does have its drawbacks. Just like Bazillions. So yeah, there is no shame in using the cheat phone if you want to do it, because let's face it, the, the it's hard to even get. But yeah, so with that, there is actually one more thing. Now that we go over both of the difficulties, there is actually more things that you can unlock. In fact, it's in here. Well, it's in the new game menu. I don't know why I'm stumbling today. So, if you recall, by doing certain actions, you are able to play as two new characters. Jean and Zero. And I, w I plan to go over these two characters right now. I did play a little bit with them because, well, I wanted to make the videos. And so, first off, we're going to be starting off with Jean. Okay, so at first glance when playing as Jean, the menu doesn't look different. However, when we actually start getting into a chapter, which is chapter 2, check it out. We're playing as Jean. Unfortunately, we have to start a new game whenever we have to play as a new character, so we're pretty much stuck with the same weapons we had at the beginning of the game. Or at least for Jean's counterpart. On the bright side, considering she's closer, I get to do this. You motherfucker. <laughs> okay, enough of maturity. So, when playing as Jean, first off, considering Jean is a controlled character, she pretty much re replaces Bayonetta in all the cutscenes. As a result, you are going to get some very hilarious cutscenes. Fancy bumping into you here. Out to find some answers about your past, are we? Your little dip in that lake has left you a bit rusty. Oh. I've been high and dry for 20 years now. The only rust on me is from the lack of any real challenge. Perhaps you're up for the task. You've already disappointed me. Sick burn on yourself, Jean. Also, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? So, when controlling Jean, there is some distinct differences. First of all, while I, while I don't have all of her, her, her tricks just yet, the main difference is that to Bayonetta is that, well, in the gameplay. First of all, her Wicked Weaves do more damage than Bayonetta's. That's the one thing that stands out. However, conversely, she takes more damage than Bayonetta, so keep this in mind when you're trying to do some really cool tricks with John. Another thing is that you can be able to dodge non-stop. I haven't mentioned this in the main playthrough. Yeah, see, right there. That is a moth within. Had this, had I been not been battling Jean, this John, then it would would have activated Witch Time. Speaking of which, using moth within is the only way to activate Witch Time when playing as John. You cannot do it the traditional method unless he has some accessories. Doing moth within is your only way to, to activate Witch Time. And I'm just going to go to another battle just to demonstrate more about Jean. Okay, as I was trying to say, there is an, there is an amount of times Bayonetta can dodge before she does this big backflip that leaves herself wide open. Not so with Jean. In fact, you can be able to do as many dodges as you want. Well, it's up until the point where you unlock her links within, which makes her run run faster. But, but yeah, you can be able to dodge all you want without any worry. Also, her Wicked Weaves, if I could just activate one are all white instead of black. This is a reference to her to her own demon, if I could just find it in the files right here. Um, her, John's is Madama Styx. Yeah, it's pretty much a recolored Madama butterfly. In fact, I'm just going to show you the, what's in the book right now so you can be able to read it.
And there you go. She has the exact same demons. For example, she also has Gamora as well, but yeah. Anyway, on to more gameplay related stuff. <laughs> so dodging. It also provides some invincibility phrases. Or phase. I said phase. It also has frames of invincibility ha as well. However, it does not produce magic, nor does it do the slowdown. So you don't know if you actually pro dodge properly or not. Yeah, see, I, I dodge right there, but it does not activate witch. Actually, is there an infinity seller so I can demonstrate the witch type principle? Oh, there it is. Yeah, you see me dodge properly, but considering there's no slowdown to let you know that you did dodge properly, yeah, witch type did not activate at the time. Like I said, you can only do it with with mod within. And of course, no slowdown to let you know that you did it successfully, so you're pretty much on your own to, to do that. Also, the bonus for attacking in during witch time is greater, so you can get greater bonus points for activating which time properly. Unlike Bayonet, John's is double, while Bayonet is only increased by 1.5. Okay, so what else can I think of? I guess that's all the differences for John. Hilarious cutscenes, different weapons, and of course, different gameplay styles. Overall, John is a bit of a challenge to work work with, even though she, you you should be feel right at home when you played Bayonetta for so long, but if you can handle all those changes, you can, should have no problem with doing John at all. And also because I just loved how the cutscene just seemed to change every time, I would like to point out that all the cutscenes that that she replaces Bayonetta in, she still has her voice. It's really funny. Also, I just want to do this one more time. You motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so next up is the other character, the Little King Zero. Well, 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 look at this little feather. Feather? Feather what? <laughs> Fellow. This is Zero, known as Little Demon King. He looks a bit strange, and guess where the guns are floating? Yeah, this is where the, the usual model for Bayonetta should be holding these guns, and this is Zero's default model. As such, invisible things are keeping the guns afloat. And more importantly, every time you attack, he maintains, well, relatively maintains this position. That's some, that's pretty much funny, just the way he acts. And guess what? If John did give you, give you your full fill of comedy with cutscenes due to the fact that it replaces Bayonetta's model, Zero's should be very interesting indeed. In fact, I collected some cutscenes from Chapter 1 alone that are hilarious to me using with Zero's model replacing Bayonetta's. Another one looking to line his pockets. <laughs> I'm beginning to see why Enzo is so fond of you. Real cute. But let's get one thing straight. No. You get one thing straight. I'm not the slightest bit interested in the fact that you made these guns. If you get in my way, I will... How do the Americans put it? Oh, yes. Bust a cap in your ass. Right on, baby. Right on. Told you those cutscenes can get weird. Anyway, so, aside from cutscenes, it's pretty much all the same, and meaning that it's pretty much gonna be the same as, as if you're controlling Bayonetta, at least in the visual part of side. Well, if you're gonna get used to seeing weirdness like this. But now, sooner or later, we're gonna have to see what Zero has to bring to the table for the battle. And there is a lot. So now on to battle with Zero. So, Zero does not- oh yeah, I have to go through all this again, but yeah. Zero does still have all the same benefits from Bayonetta, so you should feel right at home. No, no, no change damage output, no change in Wicked Weaves, that's pretty much all there is to it, and you can pretty much activate which time normally. What isn't normal is what happens when you get hit, which I will do so promptly. Yeah, right there. It took out a huge chunk of, of Zero's HP bar. 
it left him into the danger zone where a single hit could kill the next hit could kill him yeah zero takes no matter how strong the hit it is takes exactly 7900 damage yeah that's the exact number which means it'll put him right in the danger zone where he, the next hit will kill him also the kiss animation looks funny but yeah which means you really have to dodge precisely at the right moment to make sure Zero stays alive. And you're going to have to get some health and enhancing items as you go. The Star of Dente is especially helpful if you want to recover Zero's health. Another thing to important note is that once you've collected all the Witch Hearts, you can be able to take another hit from Zero since since collecting all the Witch Hearts will put you at 8,000 8, uh, 8, HP. And that means that's just enough to have you survive at least two hits. Which means two hits will then put you in the danger zone instead of one. But yeah, playing as zero is a really dangerous activity, so you're gonna have to be careful and not get hit a lot unless you really, really want to die. So with that out of the way, that concludes everything that we need to know about the higher difficulties. But what else is there that we need to do? And there is one last thing I would like to show off. And that last thing is here in the Gates of Hell, well, in my personal file. Which means, if you look at Rodan's treasures, after you collected a total of 10 million halos, which in my personal file, that is huge, you get the Platinum Ticket. Which, if you buy it, something interesting happens, but you need 9999999 halos to use it. So, that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode of Bayonetta. Next time, we're going to be taking a look at the Platinum Ticket to see what it houses. And good news, I have never done what's behind the Platinum Ticket, so this is going to be experience for both of us. See you guys next time. Bye!